Hi and welcome again to Learning AutoCAD 2013. Today we'll draw this simple facade in elevation while learning these commands. By the end of this tutorial you will know how to draw arcs, rectangles, ellipses, circles, polylines and tunnels. These lessons are being produced by EasyCAD for you and just remember that if you like this video don't forget to share it. Let's start by calling the command rectangle. When we go here to the drop down menu, you can see that there are two options polygon and rectangle. We already uh, explained polygon in a previous tutorial, so we will click on rectangle. Now, notice the first prompt is specify first point. Let's click anywhere on the screen, and now you see that the next prompt is point four. And let's select dimensions. And after that, you are required to provide the width. Let's enter 24 inches, and for the height, we'll use 36, but then you still need a last click to indicate the position of the rectangle. Now let's repeat the command, but we will use the chamfer option. Now the first request is specify first chamfer distance, and this refers basically to the distance from the very corner of the uh, rectangle to the, to the point where the chamfer will start. Let's use 3 inches for both distances. Now we locate the point we want to use as first point, and when we start dragging toward the second point, you can see a preview of our chamfer rectangle. And finally, we locate the second point, and this closes the command when you click the second point. Now we have the base for the first column of our elevation. To create the other two, let's use a reference line of 6 feet so we can start the second base with a precise measurement. In previous tutorials, I explained how to use reference lines, so I hope you're familiar with the concept. Now, when we call the command rectangle again, it comes predetermined with the last mode we used. So, it will generate a chamfered rectangle. Just repeat the process, select rectangle. See how I enter here a C for chamfer, but reverse the chamfer distance to zero for both distances, and it will go back to the normal rectangle. This is common in almost every AutoCAD command. CAD will keep records of your last used settings in every command or in almost every command, and will start it again with the last values you use. For the inner chamfer rectangle, let's do it again. Use reference lines to locate the points you will use. And then go to the command rectangle. Use the chamfer option. Repeat the 3 inches value for both distances. And select the second point so you can close the command. For the third base, let's do just the same. Use it as a practice and try it now on your own. If you happen to have any problems, just follow what I'm doing here at the screen. For the next tutorial, I'll teach you some modifiers which will accelerate this process. As you can see now, we have completed the basis. Let's get rid of these reference lines and let's use the command P line or polyline, which is here next to line in the home tab. We'll locate the first point at 4 inches from the edge, and now we'll enter the values. Again, I'm assuming you saw my previous tutorials to learn how to do this. So I'm using ortho mode with direct entry, and I'll enter 4 inches, 16 inches, and 4 inches again. Now, after you select the last one, now right click or hit enter so the, co the commands get closed. But let's see one of the main differences with the line command. I draw here the same object, but using line instead of P line. And at this. When I select any of the segments of the P-line, you can see that the whole polyline is selected. If I do this in the object created with the line command, every segment is independent from the other, and you can treat it like individual entities. On the other hand, P-line creates a single object composed of different segments, and it provides way more flexibility than line because you can create it out of lines and arcs with different thickness and characteristics, but still can be treated as a single object. 
Now go ahead yourself and repeat the process for the th second and third bases. And now let's do the columns on top of the bases and we'll do it four inches from each one of the edges. We'll use the line command and we'll assign a four feet high to it. But as you will see, it really doesn't matter whether you use line or P-line for individual straight lines. So for the other two columns, shaft, I will use the command P-line. For our next part, now we'll use again the command rectangle, but we'll select the drop-down menu and click on the fillet option. Notice it says specify fillet radius for rectangle and see at the command prompt that I enter the value of one inch. Now it prompts you for the second point or gives you the same option we already saw at the beginning. But let's just click uh, where we want to have the second point. Now you see we just have a rectangle with round corners and because we're going to do the same filleted rectangle for the other two columns, we just need to call again the command and all our previous settings for the fillet mode are predefined, so we don't need to change it unless we want some values different. Since this is not the case, we'll just select first and second points. And so far, we have used P-line and rectangle commands. Now, for the top part of the facade, let's draw the exterior lines of four feet each one, and we'll use the markers of off snap to locate the point on top of the columns. Now we'll do the fascia board and we'll use again the command rectangle. Remember, however, that you need to put the command back to normal. And for that, you need to follow the previous instructions on how to do it. Now, instead of using click entry for the point, we'll give CAD the dimensions for this long rectangle. After you locate and specify the first point, now enter D for dimensions and provide the length which is 17 feet 4 inches and the width which is 10 inches and once we hit enter then you see it's done. Now let's go to use the arc command. When we pull the drop down menu we see that we have a bunch of options to draw an arc. In this case what will determine which option you will use is the information you have of your intended arc. When you hover on top of this option, you'll see that an explanation pops up. And if at any time you're not sure on how to use one, you can go and read it. In this case, I'll use the start, end, and angle option. Cut prompts you for the first point, select it. Then for the end point of the arc, select it also. And finally, you need to enter the included angle. You will see here, in blue, the suggested option, which, which is 180 degrees, I'll enter that angle and hit enter, and that'll be the resulted arc. Let's try now a different option. You can see how your selection is dependent on the information you have. I'll draw a reference P line, so here I determine the center of this line. And because now I have a different option, I'll use the start, center, and end option. Second one from top to bottom. And cut prompts you first point, see, center point, and end point. You select it in that order, and we just did the same without using the angle but a midpoint. Let's draw a reference P line at six inches from the bottom part of the facial board, and now we'll call ellipse command. But you have only two options besides the elliptical arc at the very bottom. The one in the middle is based on the radius and length of the axis. But in our case, we'll use the top one because I want to enter this ellipse along the width of the facade at the very middle. So the first prompt is for the center of the ellipse, and I'll use the midpoint here. Second prompt is for the end point of axis, so you can click randomly but most likely you will have a measurement for this. So in my case, I will enter the number five, which means five inches. And this refers to the radius of the axis. 
next prompt now is the distance to other axes. And again, you can use any point, but you should have a specific distance for this. I'll use here 12 inches, which is a foot long. And remember, this is the radius. So my ellipse will have two feet wide and 10 inches high. For our ne next command, circle, the same applies. We have seen it on previous tutorials and the information you have is the one determining which option you will use. For this example, I'll draw a case for the exercise to use an option that I haven't tried in the previous tutorials. And while I'm doing this case here using the p-line command, notice that I use the arc option of the command to indicate I want now an arc instead of a line. And then I'll use the angle option by typing A. After I enter that option, it is requesting the included angle. Since I already know the number I want, I'll enter 250 degrees, hit enter, and now it is asking for the end point of the arc. I, previously, I showed you how to use the center radius and center diameter option. The two point and three points works just as its name suggests. For this, I'll select the last one, the 10, 10, 10, which refers to a circle tangential to three different objects. Those objects, as you can see, are the arc and the two lines of my case. And when I select the points anywhere in this object, CAD will create a circle tangential to those objects. Now we'll do it again, but we'll also use the actual circle as a tangential object. And for the next final set, exactly, we'll do the same. Just remember that the circle will be created tangential to that object that you selected. Now we'll raise the reference case we did, and although I have here the others, uh, the other side done, you go ahead and try to do it on your own. And finally, let me show you how to use the donut command. In the home tab of the ribbon, the first panel, which is the one we're using, the draw panel. Pick the triangle next to, to the word draw to expand the panel. We'll talk in the future about most of these that I'm signaling here, but the last one is the donut command. Click it and you see it prompts you to specify inside diameter. I will select one inch for this and then it will ask for the outside diameter and I'll enter two inches. The next prompt now is specify center of donut. Once you select the position for the center of the donut to be drawn, the donut is completed and you will see it just like this. But now let's do a closed donut. Repeat the command, but replace the inside diameter from one to zero inches and keep the rest just like the previous uh, settings. So for Use two for the outside diameter. Once we're done, you can see that there is no inside diameter, but a solid or filled circle. And although there are some other settings like the fill setting, and you should go ahead and practice on your own. For our next tutorial, I will show you how to use some modifiers like copy, mirror, array, and some other that will expedite the drawing process and make it really, really easy. For now, this is all folks. Remember, you can like the video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.